Alright, welcome back to EverQuest. This is the Wandering XR 7. Anyways, I haven't given an update in a little while. I'm just uh, kind of working on a little script here that will do some parsing uh, for the game. And uh, right now we're sitting at uh, level 23, so slowly but surely going up because I don't do a whole lot of playing right now. But I uh, spent some time in the Lake of Yellow and killing some uh, AVX over there. And I'm probably going to change things up because it's, that's getting a little slow, a little boring. So we're over here in EC. And I'm just building up some auction information here into the logs. Because I want my little script here to do uh, auction parsing. So I'm going to run it right here and... Uh, Our little shell script here and it keeps track of anything you loot of course if you loot 10 copper it'll say one silver for example so it'll automatically carry to the uh, the next highest level uh, it keeps track of certain things that you preset in a config file that you loot like say bone chips for example it'll give you a number I was getting a lot of those back in Kearns and I really miss Kearns because I love all the uh, undead abilities here that is a necromancer One of the things that uh, I was hoping to find some skeletons around here, um, or something that I think there was one over here over this ridge. I think it's the one with the uh, it's the one with the uh, with the cracked staff. Yeah, there's one right there. Nice a little uh, little lonely this king skeleton here. There's his buddy. Anyways, we're going to go ahead and uh, send him uh, to a, uh, I wouldn't say a life of peace, but uh, a little death of peace here. <laughs> rest, buddy, rest. Okay. Warren Greystaff. So we can see that it uh, updated here with one silver, eight copper. We got 18 copper off the corpse. The uh, no bone chips, though, unfortunately. But that's all right. Oh, poor corn. Yeah, I should have sent him a second life. Kill him, kill pig. I got some kind of box. Just a small box, huh? Yeah, I really don't want that. Let's try that. And we got a pick. Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. So spell effects. So I just started the script. I wouldn't be tracked. It runs the uh, the function about every six seconds. I could have it done a lot faster. And it'll give me the. Uh, the time until it's act, um, the active time, and I can go in this here with Gather Shadows. And it's going to show us how long we're going to be uh, in this for approximately, right? But if this does fail, it'll play a sound. Now, getting to randomly uh, fail on me is going to be uh, interesting, so what I'm going to do is actually. Uh, Go here, and I'll just send a command to the log. I'm gonna say, uh, from here. Actually, we'll just uh, finish the log. Did I change my, uh, yes I did, I changed it to the back of log. So we're going to actually gonna do, that's alright. There we go, we send that to the log, and it will uh, play a sound just like that. 
and it'll show Gathering Shadows failed. And a yellow ASCII uh, or ANSI escape sequence. So we cancel it out, and there we go. So other than that and tracking the loot, we can also send commands to it. And we can do so through the uh, note functionality. And so we can type in here something like help. I got my mic in a weird place, so I'm kind of messing with my typing. Um, here we go. So right now, not a whole lot here. We reset the counter. Aux display, main display. Switch over here, aux. And here we go. Right now, it's just showing my filters. It just shows 12 out of how many you have. The uh, results that I'm working on right now. I'm going to start with just want to sell auctions. So we can track those. On the main screen, on the main screen I'll have like a little asterisk or something that will pop up in there and alert you that something hits your uh, trigger. And the way I'm uh, actually doing this is um, we're just doing a little config file here. So I had this originally configured directly into the uh, shell script, but uh, now this makes it a lot easier because I can actually change these or add to them uh, while the script is running, and, it, and the function will uh, automatically propagate to the variables. The uh, like alert death, uh, 318 seconds. I have it set for the duration. I try to set it a little bit under what the maximum duration is. That way the, the expired dialog will uh, show up for a period of time. This is the trigger that will set it off in the log. This is the trigger that will uh, set it to being off. The, um, the fail trigger is like for invisibility and that kind of thing. Uh, you feel yourself starting to appear and it'll play this sound here, which the sound is wave files in the same directory. This right now is tracking bone chip, spider silk, and spiraling silk. So to keep a counter for these things that I leave. And these are the auction stuff. Most of this is just here for testing purposes, just to kind of make it nice, clean little columns and all that here in the, in the filters list that we can see here on the screen here in the terminal. And I'm actually going to make this terminal a little bit bigger so it's easier to see. We'll make the text larger. You can kind of see that, and we'll switch back over here to the uh, the main dialog, main display. And so that makes it a little bit easier to see on uh, YouTube, especially if you don't have a uh, ultra wide screen. And uh, so anything you add to that will automatically be brought into the uh, script while it's running. So I was looking at something on GitHub. And it's this page right here. So it looks, um, and the reason why this looks interesting, this is uh, Dylan A. Raps. And what he, he is the writer of NeoFetch and FFF, which stands for Effing Fast File, System, File Manager. And he creates, with Bash Scripts, he creates terminal user interfaces without using any kind of API like uh, curses, any kind of curses or in curses related APIs, stuff like that. And he does so entirely with ANSI escape sequences. So, this, and, and he actually uses escape sequences that are uh, very portable. We'll even work on the bash on Mac, uh, which is stuck in version three. And it's just, uh, he explains his code very well. How is, so I was playing around with all these escape sequences, and I'm eventually going to turn this into like a terminal user interface. So it's going to have a like a permanent status bar. It's going to have sections on it, like the auction screen, the bottom part where it'll display auctions. They'll actually be scrollable uh, by the user. Um, and that way you can always see your filters on top, even maybe even scroll through the filters with like maybe uh, the side arrows or tab or something to that degree. And so that's going to be something that I will uh, be working on here. After I get the auction part working the way I want it, 
and then and that's about figuring the best way to parse the auction and stuff right um, so anyways I'm gonna I'm gonna save uh, this here to the uh, terminal so um, I got that escape sequence in there. And, uh, we'll set my dad back up. And, uh, so we can actually look at it here in the terminal. And so that's going to be really helpful. Um, yeah, he, he writes some really cool, uh, stuff in Bash. And I may eventually rewrite this in, in Python or C or something like that. But, um, for right now, I will, um, Kind of playing around with Bash a little bit because it's something that uh, I try to keep my skill up a little bit on it because I use it for a lot of different uh, uh, system administrative stuff and uh, that kind of thing. In fact, since I already got that, I'll just go close that up. The um, so my auction parse uh, function has nothing in it yet at all. And so it's just saying return at the uh, at the moment to send it back to the main loop. And uh, and what I'm going to try to do is use awk. I want awk to be the only non-built-in dependency um, that I'm going to be using um, in this script. And so I'm like using this to parse the notes that I showed earlier to do uh, various commands and that kind of thing. Um, this is for, of course, handling the coin loot and just in time about tracking stuff. But it was, uh, actually, let's leave that alone. Let's move back over here. So, as far as doing the auction stuff, I mean, I, I can get it to kind of work. I mean, I can get it to work how I want to if I pipe in a whole bunch of commands. Like if I'm doing two different grep uh, pattern matches and then moving it into awk or moving into sed and use sed to then remove um, the first part of the log and then the auction part of the log and then clean up around where the actual item is being uh, auctioned. And I can actually use the, the Perl uh, regex um, that's in grep and actually have it only show a certain number of characters on either side of the match. Uh, those are all going to be uh, fairly useful ways to do that. In fact, I need to make this terminal window a little larger. You can actually see it on the video because that's going to be uh, <laughs> pretty hard, pretty hard to see right there. And um, and so I have a backup of the log, and that's actually what's in my log video, the log uh, uh, variable right there. And that's going to be um, it's just the dot text dot back right there. And so, I'm going to uh, look in there, let's say, Bernie I High Club, right? So, I was thinking about, like, this way here, uh, just using uh, a Redix uh, pattern match, and you can say, options, um, and then WTS for want to sell, and then, we, of course, we can put that in the log, and what that's going to do is going to give us a whole bunch of stuff, right? Every, pretty much every auction out there. Uh, that's my lines of that. 160 lines. If I remove the the uh, want to sell, we have 226. So quite a bit more sales than there are uh, want to buys, but still quite a bit of want to buys that are uh, being listed here. And uh, of course, I'll make this uh, where it's going to make sure that it's going to be uh, case insensitive. And so, let's get rid of this pipe here. Show the lines. And what I'm probably going to do is have it... Um, a probably... What I was kind of testing here is maybe do like a, uh, a for loop uh, within awk. That's what I did a lot here in, in my script. And... Um, we can do like a four. A little set it to i equals. And we'll set it for the uh, seventh. 
and it buys uh, less or equal to the number of fields, and we're going to set auto increment. And I believe seventh was the field number. Auth considers a different word, like this word here, which also includes uh, the single quote. This word, these were all records, or excuse me, these were fields, and each line is, of course, a record. Um, and what I'm going to do, so I was looking, I was looking at doing this maybe doing it this way where I can do a, a comparator operator. So that's this right here at AUG is the, uh, the regex comparator. And that's because maybe they're saying they want to sell bone chips with a comma. Well, that won't appear with the equals operator. So we'd have to use, in this case, I'll put burn eye for like a burning eye pipe cloak, right? Or high tunic. And um, let's go put some double quotes on that. It's the more single quote in the whole command. Um, and uh, what we'll have right now is print the whole line. Okay, so we have right now the burning eye hooded cloak. And actually, it's removing the burning eye part in it. Oh, that's hooded back cloak. Back cloak. Okay. Okay, as I said, I, I didn't set it to where it should, S-E-D, set it where it'll uh, actually do any replacements. Okay, um, so here's burning a high cloak. And I want to clean it up, get rid of this, uh, this date stamp here, and get rid of this auctions part. And I'll eventually have a setup to where it'll actually just show the items being sold and maybe the next 15 characters, like 20 characters maybe. Um, that way, you know, if they are showing a price, you can just see the price right there without having the entire line. If they're doing like a, a meta sale like they are here, and that's that should um, show up, uh, that would show up correctly. But the problem with awk is, of course, the default field separator is a space. Uh, it's space and tab and um, a combination of spaces. And a problem with that is if I put burning a hide here, nothing appears. Because my field separator is treating this as two separate fields. It's treating this as two separate fields. And you cannot set variables in awk with two separate fields. Because that kind of goes against what awk does. Awk is for extracting data in both fields and records. So uh, we can uh, set this up as a multi. So we can do this, this, forward slash maybe as different separators. And uh, now burn a high cloak uh, tunic should show up. And it does. But the problem is, is now my fields are going to be all messed up here. So if I look at field 5 versus field 1, field 3, you see now I can't separate these appropriately. So what I'm going to have to do is use something like SAD to write the whole thing in like a temporary file, maybe in RAM somewhere, and then go in and reparse it with awk, or I'm going to have to use SAD uh, had to pipe it, which kind of, I mean, that's okay. I just prefer to find a nice, simple way in awk that makes it look nice and clean instead of just piping a bunch of commands like you'll see usually newbies will do. You go pipe, 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 you know, with a whole bunch of stuff. And so we can actually uh, go back to just uh, zero because I actually print I. It's just, yeah, it will show that. That's nice. It actually shows the, uh, the amount he's selling it for. The problem with that is not everybody's going to use one of those field separators. When they're listing things, they might not use, they may just use a space. And so then it won't show up properly. And we can actually use this to also show what was behind it. If I actually put another instance there. Or we can do plus one here. To show the uh, other item if they're properly done, but a lot of the auctions 
aren't like that. So, so we'll just go back to just doing the whole thing, which helps if I have that in there. And then what we'll do is we can just pipe in a sad and let's search for the actual term which was the burning a high cloak actually no let's not do that yet let's actually do let's get rid of the let's start from the uh, beginning line in the log and let's do no let's not do that Let's do just that right now in a space. What did I do wrong there? Oh, yeah. There we go. There we go. And uh, a typo on my red dicks there. And we can do uh, auctions with the comma, space, place that, and we can add in, let's see, let's get rid of this space here in front of auctions. And we can add in a, hold on, for the space. There we go. That looks a lot nicer. So for right now, I could probably use this to bring it in there. And then we can use maybe we'll pipe it again. We could do like uh, case sensitivity. Let's do oh, let's do it with the pearl option for the red X. And uh, we can do let's say zero five. We'll say burn five tunic. Right, and we'll do the same thing here, but we'll do maybe the 15. And, um, okay, so there we go. And if we actually get rid of this, probably look a little cleaner. So it'll actually just show just a small part of it. But then, of course, naturally it's going to get rid of the person's name, so we can either go and set their names into an array, and then just print the two arrays together that we store this information into or I could just pipe it another way that will actually still um, pin that here into the rep or actually if I'm just doing a whole thing in a for loop I can just do it in a simple variable at this point have awk just place it into a uh, simple variable uh, because it'll do well, actually I got the field separator screwed up but really, with this many commands, I could just I could just simply do a bunch of I could just simply rep and then just said. So I'm not sure exactly how I want to do it yet, because I want to have, of course, the name like this, then item, right? Plus maybe 15 pairs from that point on. That's kind of what I'm looking at. But I've kind of droned on. Kind of grown on enough here. Just want to uh, kind of show the little things I'm working on here. Just to kind of play around and have some fun with this. Uh, just this little script. I'm gonna set it up too, where it automatically switch characters, so it can track everything individually. Even have different config files for every character. Um, once I get the auction stuff done, and then I'm going to work on the terminal user interface. Uh, playing with those ANSI escape characters, I think that's going to be a lot of fun. Just kind of play around while you're camping during downtime. Just gives us something to do. But anyways, that's enough right here, I guess, for the Wandering XR back in EverQuest. Kind of chilling over here in the EC tunnels. And y'all have a great one.